Hi, stationery friends. Welcome to Ginger Peachy Stationery. Um, I have today what I think will be a fun video. I want to talk all about um, ink swatching, ink um, tracking, um, tracking what pens and inks you know I've used and that kind of thing. Um, I want to share with you my Colodex, which is um, lovely right now, and um, talk to you a little bit about how I swatch my inks. Um, so you may have seen my little reel or my short that I made, but um, I received a Colodex for Christmas. Well, I received the Rolodex itself, the actual thing, and a set of the cards. These are made by um, Anna Reinert at the Well Appointed Desk, and they're made specifically for ink swatching. Um, so I already have a Kohler ring. I've had this for several years. Um, if you've been around for a long time, you'll remember um, the the, Mar the Nemesine word cards, the Maramine Nemesine word cards. These were um, everyone's ink swatching cards of choice, and then they decided to stop making these. And so there was this crazy scramble for um, people to buy them up and they all sold out everywhere um, because, you know, people used lots and lots of them. So it wasn't too long after that, that Anna Reinert, um, who is over at the well-appointed desk, she has a blog and an Instagram account and um, she's a regular um, voice regular guest on the Pen Addict podcast. Um, her husband owns a, a letterpress company. She and her husband together, I think, and I think they, I think it's his company, um, but they work together to create the Cola Ring. So this is very similar to this one, about the same size, you know, they're both on this ring, and she chose some paper that is pretty similar as well, um, that's thick, and it's perfect for ink swatching. So I think it comes with, yeah, 100 sheets, two by four inches, made at Skylab letterpress. Um, I will link this down below. But um, I got a coloring and just decided to start over. So I kind of, like I redid, you know, all the inks that I could that were even in this one. I really just don't even reach for this one at all. And decided to do them a little differently you know I swab the ink in the middle and 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 do them this way so a little differently than the other um, and this has served me really well um, I have liked it at one point I put them all in color order and numbered them so I could put them keep them in color order and then I switched them back to alphabetical order and then I put them back in color order again and <laughs> now they're back in alphabetical order because for Christmas, my family gave me a Kohler ring. So the Kohler ring, like I said, is also made by Anna at the well-appointed desk and uh, by Skylab Letterpress, um, but they're made to go on a Rolodex. So um, my family gave me two sets of them. So I have 200 cards and I have spent Time, this the month of January um, probably six or eight different little sessions swatching every ink that I have <laughs> so um, it has been so fun just going through and swatching inks I'm sorry I know this kind of squeaks when I turn it but I mean just look at that isn't it beautiful <laughs> so um, you know every ink that I have right now is swatched in here and um, it was really fun to do. So um, quickly, I thought I would show you how I swatch my inks um, that I've found to, to work really well. And um, then I wanna just talk about how I kind of track my uh, pen and ink usage and maybe get your thoughts <laughs> because I've come up with a new idea that I think might be overkill, but I'm not sure yet. So um, anyway, so quickly, I'll do this fast. I kind of get myself set up ahead of time. Here are my tools. I use a, a card. I have an old towel that, um, that I've been using and I have two water vessels. This is my little trick. 
Um, I have something to hold my ink vial if I need to. This is an Inca pet. This is the little penguin and I, he has his little Valentine's costume on. I'm thinking of going in and painting in some little eyes because, I mean, I don't want to say they creep me out, but I just think he would be cuter with some little eyes. And I use three tools. Um, I use a paintbrush, a um, regular nib. This is a Jin Hao nib that I just had extra and threw it in here. And I have a blue pumpkin nib that I got in a calligraphy class that I took. Um, I would like some nice pretty um, nib holders at some point, but they're not something that I'm going to spend a lot of money on. So for now, these are just fine. So, and I'm going to swatch this mystery ink. I do not know what is in this container. And look, that's got like, like dust and stuff stuck to where the label was. No idea what it is. So this is the only one that I have not swatched and I decided it would be a good place, to, <laughs> good one to just swatch it. And maybe I can figure out what it is. Um, I like to start with a wet brush. I don't know why. I just, I think it adds some consistency and then I will dip my brush and swatch my ink. I'm going to try to do this quickly because I don't want to spend a lot of time here. This looks a lot like um, Waterman Inspired Blue, which is one of my most favorite inks. I don't know. I'm going to have to compare with things that I already have swatched. I'll kind of get a little extra and kind of put a pool, you know, on one side. Oh man, I'm doing this out of frame, aren't I? I'm so sorry. So <laughs> kind of put a little pool on one side. Um, and then kind of leave that to dry. Um, the reason I use two water vessels is because you can see this one turns blue really quickly. Um, so I use the second one just to make sure I'm getting off any little remnants of ink. And if you saw my reel or my YouTube short, you'll see that like this second one after like 30 ink swatches, this one stays almost completely clear because, which tells me that this first one is doing its job, but I like this second little um, rinse just to try to make sure I'm not contaminating an ink bottle with another ink. So then I use just the regular nib. I know I could use the, um, the blue pumpkin to write the name of the ink. I'm gonna write mystery ink. Um, but this kind of shows me what it's gonna look like in a regular fine to medium nib. And then this is something I just kind of added on recently is to use the blue pumpkin and load it up pretty good. Sometimes some inks this works well with and some it just doesn't. But then do a little, uh, see, I don't know, some inks just, I don't know if it's like low viscosity, I think maybe is the word, that they just don't hang on to this nib very well. And so I'll just do kind of a little swatch like that so I can see what it would look like in a, you know, a flex nib or something. Um, I don't know exactly how it's gonna help, but, so that's what I do. And then I'll move this to the side and let it dry. Um, I don't think this is Waterman Inspired Blue because I'm not getting any of the red sheen. But um, yeah, so then once this is dry, it goes into my Colodex. So let me move this out of the way. And so I started out with this color ring. And like I said, I had all the, the inks in here in alphabetical order. But then, you know, when you go, okay, well, I want to compare all of the, this is my kind of a go-to, all of the tealish, greeny, teal colors. Then you have to go through and think, okay, is there one made by Ferris Wheel Press? Yeah, let me pull that one out. Okay, is there, do I have, oh, look, there's a J. Airbon one that kind of goes in that family. So I want to compare that one. So it's a lot harder to compare similar colors this way, which is why at two different points, I took all of these out and put them in color order and then tried to come up with a system like numbering them to try to keep them in that order, which failed because I forgot, I forgot that I had numbered them. So that was what gave me the idea to also get a Colodex. Um, I have enjoyed, oh, I'm sorry, I hit my camera. I have enjoyed taking time and swatching all these inks. 
Um, it's, it's made me revisit inks that I haven't looked at, you know, in a while, or maybe have never even put in a pen. Um, a few, most of them I have, but there are a few swatch, um, samples that I have never put in a pen before. And so it was like, oh yeah, I want to try that. Or, oh yeah, that used to be one of my favorite inks. Let me, you know, remember to use that again. Not to mention that like doing this little flippy flip is so satisfying. Um, I really hope that that sound is not terrible in the, in the camera. Um, so, um, here are my thoughts. Okay. I, this just occurred to me the other day. I was watching the Friday, um, chat with Mike Madison at Ink Dependence on YouTube. And I noticed on the back of one of his Colodex cards, he had written with a pen, like with the pen that had that ink in it. And I thought, huh, that is not a bad idea because my current um, system for tracking my, what, you know, tracking my pens and inks is this notebook. So this notebook is a Hobonichi, um, just the yellow covered notebook. And I just started with the pens that I had inked to begin with. I put, I grouped them by brand, um, to keep them straight. And I, you know, made an index in the, in the front and then each pen has a page with a number in the corner and I can write down what ink is in that pen. And so I can kind of get a, you know, a good picture of what does this ink look like in this nib. Um, and you know, I, oh, and I, I put the dates of when I inked it and when I cleaned the pen, um, which some of those numbers are very long, <laughs> but, and this has served me fine. Like this is, is fine. It's good. Um, but I can't use this and say, okay, you know, Diamine Marine, let me see how it looks in different nibs. Unless I'm going to go through every single page and go, did I use it with this pen? No. Did I use it with this pen? No. Obviously not that slow, but you can't compare what does, excuse me, what does Diamine Marine look like in different nibs? So there's a downside to that, you know? Um, so I thought, I saw Mike Madison do that, do this, and so I thought this is a good idea. I'm sorry, I keep saying so. <laughs> um, so last night I inked up my brand new, brand new, Banu Talisman in True Unicorn from Gourmet Pens. This thing is beautiful. It is so gorgeous. Um, I So I inked this up last night and said, okay, well, let me just write this down. I just wrote Banu Talisman Medium. And maybe I do need to, go, I will go ahead and write True Unicorn on there. So I'll know specifically which pen. Um, so that I will have a record after a while of the pens that I've had this ink in. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I may want to write them this way so that I can fit more on the back of the card because some of my inks I use a lot in a lot of pens. So that is a change that I think I might do. And secondly, I wanna make sure that's kind of dry. I'm gonna take that out. It goes in front of Diamine Scarlet. So when I'm trying to figure out where to put it, <laughs> that's where it goes. So I thought, why don't I use the little index things that came with the Rolodex itself and make a card for each pen to write down the ink name that is in the pen, <laughs> like I do in this book. Okay, so I need to back up a little bit, I guess. Um, my thought with that is that one thing about this notebook too is that um, when I sell a pen, it still has a whole page in this book. You know, like I've sold 15 at least pens that have been listed in here. And so they're still taking up a page in this book 
and I'm going to run out of pages in this book. You know, like I've, I mean, not immediately. I've got still quite a few, but I just don't know. Um, I thought, you know, if I put them in here, then I can take them out when I no longer own the pen. And I could even have a section of, um, like pens I have sold, you know, that could go like in the back. So, um, I guess I, I don't know. I want to know, is this overkill? <laughs> um, because I, I mean, listen, if you're like regularly watching a YouTube, like watching YouTube videos about fountain pens and inks, then it, we're at the point of overkill, right? Like not overkill would just be using a ballpoint every day. <laughs> so, um, but so then do I keep putting them in here? And I think I want to say yes. I think I want to, when I ink a pen, put it in three different places. So I'm going to put, I will write the, I will give each pen a card here and write the ink that was in it. And perhaps if I re-ink this pen with this color, with this ink, I won't write it again. Um, because I'm not dating this. So it will just be, this is how this ink looks in this pen. This is how this nib looks, you know, writing from this nib looks from different, with different inks. Sorry, words. And then on the back of the ink cards, which I might not find that one, but you know, oh, there it is. <laughs> then I will record what nibs, what pens slash nibs I have put the ink in. And I did go ahead and date it. Um, I don't know, should I date? Anyway, I put the year, like the month and the year, um, to show, you know, like, I guess keep track of when the last time was I used this ink or something like that. Um, I've only done one so far because I was kind of undecided. But then I've been watching C. Monet on here on YouTube. I love her videos. She is um, German and she has an awesome accent. And um, she has been doing this little, I don't know why I say little. She has been um, tracking her inks in a journal. And I watched her just the other day, like put a little ink swatch and write the name of the pen and the ink that was in it. And then write her thoughts about it. You know, like this ink is really dry in this nib. It needs to go in a a broader nib, you know, um, or I really like this combo. It matches really well. This ink was made for this pen kind of things. And so I thought, you know, I've got plenty of room in this notebook at this point because I have the front and the back of every page that I could do a little bit of that, you know, and a lot of my favorite pens, I consistently re-ink with the same ink over and over. So, you know, I may not fill the whole page ever with it, um, uh, you know, with, with notes. So I'm thinking of that with this notebook, I can do a little bit more of like, here's what I like and here's what I don't like. Um, another complaint about this notebook too, is that I can't organize the pens by brand. And so, you know, I, like I started out with these by brand, but obviously, you know, as I get new pens or I ink up things, I owned more than this many pens when I started it, you know, but every time I've either bought a pen or re-inked a pen that I haven't inked in a while, I have to add it to the end of the list. And so I end up with this big jumble of brands. And so it's harder to find what I'm looking for. So yesterday I grabbed my Zebra Mild Liners and went through and I found all the Pelicans and then highlighted them brown and all the Twisbees and I highlighted them orange just so that when I'm going, okay, Twisbee, 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 Eco, Pastel Pink, you know, it's where I can find it easier. Um, but with the, the, the Colodex, I would not have to do that because I can sort them by brand. So all I put in here was the B label because the only one I have in here is this Banu. <laughs> but I have, you know, all the letters of the alphabet that I can put in here. So anyway, I know this was kind of jumbly. <laughs> I'm sorry. My thoughts were all over the place. Um, I had kind of thought this through, but didn't really know what was going to come out of my mouth. So tell me what you think. Um, is it way overkill to record inks in three places? Um, is there something I'm not thinking of here? Like, 
how do you keep track of your inks? And, you know, I mean, some people's answer is I don't. I just ink my pens when I want to and then clean them at some point or not. But I do like to keep track. I like to know, oh, hey, like, like I was flipping through my journal um, from last year and I was like, this page looks beautiful. What pen and ink is this? And I had no idea. <laughs> and so um, I was able to, for that one, I think I was able to go into this notebook and like use the dates and figure out what it was. And, um, but it was, it was complicated. So that's kind of what got me thinking about this is I want to be able to know what I've used and how I liked it and how it looked in that nib and, um, you know, all of these sorts of things. So anyway, um, I hope everyone is having a great day and thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, if you, um, have our returning, um, watcher, viewer, would you please subscribe to my channel? Um, I am getting so close to 500 and that is, that is very exciting. Um, so yeah, if you would hit subscribe, I would appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all of you for watching this far, especially. Um, and yeah, let me know your thoughts. I would love to chat with you in the comments. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is gingerpeachypins. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.